Always great catching up with my next guest. Jillian Robertson is going to be fighting Pollyanna Botello coming up here at UFC Fight Night on October 17th on Fight Island. Jillian, how's it going? I'm doing great. Uh, quarantine in Vegas right now. I'm heading to uh, Topic Abbey at 3 a.m. tonight and then uh, ready to finish up my camp at Fight Island. <laughs> How's uh, quarantine going? Because I know we were, I was joking off air. You know, you're either in training at the beach or hanging out with your dog. You're doing none of those right now. So how, how's it going with the quarantine? I've rearranged the whole uh, hotel room we got here. So training's still going on. But, oh, good. Uh, okay. Definitely missing my dog and definitely uh, uh, missing getting outside, getting in some sunlight right now. We've been, uh, we COVID tested at home, then flew to Vegas, COVID tested here. I've been quarantined here. I'm going to fly to Abu Dhabi and COVID test there and get quarantined there. Yeah. So it's definitely a lot. <laughs> yeah. It's a little complicated. Now we haven't seen you since June, but I know you did compete in submission underground. Now, how cool was that experience? And is that something you're looking to do again? Oh, that was an awesome experience. And uh, to go against a high level black belt, like Amanda Lowen, which is, it, it's an honor to be able to compete against any of these girls. And, um, yeah, I love competing just in general. I love putting myself out there and I love challenging myself. I want to be the best at this. And, uh, I feel like there's a lot of girls, especially in MMA that don't, uh, because MMA and Nogi are two different worlds. So it's terrifying to go into her world when I'm going to do this, but I love it. And, uh, yeah, I just love challenging myself. And I think the cool thing about it too, is like, it doesn't affect your MMA record, right? Like you can go and lose a fight, but you can gain all that experience without having to risk, you know, losing a fight in the UFC. Right. Which I think is kind of a benefit to you fighters. Uh, you know, especially when you're not fighting maybe as frequently as you'd like. Oh yeah. And especially it, like, it helps you keep active and it helps keep your mind active. So you're always in that competition mindset, just putting yourself, giving yourself all those nerves, all those jitters before you go out there and compete. Uh, I feel like that's important to get yourself used to those. Yeah, no, that's uh, that's great. And your last fight, I mean, that couldn't have gone any better. Submitting Court- Courtney Casey, who's someone who's very tough to finish. Uh, was that one a little bit more satisfying just because Courtney is pretty durable and you don't typically see her lose by stoppage? It's usually a decision. Um, I guess uh, after the matter, I was looking at it like that. I was like, no, she's, she's brought a lot of tough girls to decisions, like Michelle Watterson, uh, I believe Cynthia Cabello she brought to a decision. There's a couple other girls, too, she has on our list that are uh, – they're – highly ranked girls so I, I guess I looked at that a little bit after but once people convinced me because I wasn't happy with my performance I wasn't happy with how the fight went and uh it could have gone a lot better on my side I felt like you didn't see the best Jillian Robertson out there you didn't okay. see uh, the best fighter that I could possibly be out there and uh it should have been a lot more dominant okay well I like the honesty on that um and you're going to fight island like we mentioned now are you excited about this some fighters don't like to do the traveling thing they'd rather fight closer to home would you have preferred you know fighting in Vegas or do you like the fact that you're going to get to go to Abu Dhabi and do this kind of unique unique thing that we you know may never see again um I'm kind of a homebody I like to stay at home yeah but uh going over I think like you said this is something that we'll never get to see again Fight Island's a once in a lifetime experience so uh, I think you have to cherish every single moment it's going to be unique and it's going to be awesome Um, I know the corner situation when you're doing sort of the international fights it can be a little bit limited Uh, who's going to be making the trip with you uh, I feel like my corner situation is always limited. usually. Yeah. I mean, I'm just saying kind of a side note here. I, I remember that time when you couldn't have Dean Thomas in your corner. So you had to actually call you. Uh, I did. You don't have anything like that for this fight. Do you? No, uh, luckily I do have Dean and that's why I am going out to Abu Dhabi a week early is he went out, uh, two weeks ago to go for Dana White's looking for a fight. They, uh, filmed out there and we're doing all that. So he's been staying out in Abu Dhabi. So he's just there waiting for me now so we can go out and finish up our camp. Oh, excellent. Okay, so yeah, it kind of worked out there in terms of that. Uh, let's talk about your opponent here, Botello. Eight and two record. What do you know about her? How do you feel like you match up against her? Um, I've watched a couple. Of, I've watched all of her UFC fights. Uh, she's three and one in the UFC, I believe. But uh, the three wins aren't necessarily against impressive opponents. It's against girls who either have losing records, who have been cut from the UFC, and just girls not of my caliber. We see she is facing uh, higher level opponents. I know she has a loss against Indica Bayo, and um, I feel like our fight's going to go si- fairly similar. I keep on joking around saying I'm just trying to beat Cynthia's time on that. So it's Cynthia's <laughs> up there in like four minutes and thirty seconds. So I got to beat that. Yeah, no, that's uh, that, that's really cool. Uh, very, very interesting matchup here. Now, training camp, uh, how, how did things go this time around, you know, leading into the fight? Uh, who did you get to work with and who are some of the bodies that uh, help you for this fight? I guess it's been all over the place a little bit. Uh, <laughs> for a couple weeks, uh, uh, Tyron Woodley obviously just fought and Dean works with him as well. So uh, me, Dean, and Shorty were spending like 
think three or four weeks where we were literally living in Tyron's gym. So Dean could work with Tyron and we could, we just worked with him all day. So while we we're up in St. Louis, obviously Jose Shorty Torres, he's my main training partner, no matter what. And uh, we also had Kelly D'Angelo who's uh, she's an Invicta. She came yeah. out and she was able to help me a couple times. Um, and when I was back in Florida, gamblers jujitsu, uh, I have Amanda Aliquin, who is one of, one of the best black belts that I've ever worked with. She's absolutely phenomenal. So I'm extremely thankful to have her there. And um, yeah, it's just been all over the place for this camp. Yeah, no, it's good though. And I think it's good that you've kind of, you know, found different, uh, you know, training partners, different looks and things like that. Cause I know obviously for a long time you were at American top team. And I know the last time I think we spoke, you hadn't left yet. You kind of were still doing, you know, working with both, but I understand now you're not there anymore. So is that a bit of a relief going into this fight? Just knowing that you don't have to, you know, worry about being loyal to, to both gyms. Um, I guess uh, HC was always useful for the training partners, no matter what. But yeah. uh, in the growth in myself as a fighter, I feel like Dean's been the reason that I have been growing. Dean is the reason that I take steps forward. So um, I guess it doesn't necessarily matter what bodies you work with because the, whoever they're going to give me different looks when I fight, no matter what. Mm-hmm. So uh, we just fly in whoever, work with whoever, and uh, just make sure I'm on point. We're focused on me more than anything else, not my training partners. Yeah, and with Dean, it's very specific towards you, which I'm sure is nice because at a big gym like American Top Team, I know there's so many people there. It's probably tougher to do that, right, to be more specific? Oh, yeah, and it's like at ACT, they have probably 10 coaches to 100 fighters, 100 professional fighters, then they have mm-hmm. their amateur team and whatever else. But it's like the, the coaches are always spread so thin. So even at ATT. I would have Dean, but I wouldn't have Dean. Like he'd be right. working with ten different fighters and me. Where now he's just working with me, and he's just working with Jose Shorty Torres more than anything. We're his two main focuses at the moment, and of course Tyron as well. But um, yeah, he's really narrowed down his focus. So now uh, we get all the attention, and it's really I've seen the difference in my training 100. percent I've seen myself just grow so much within this year, within this whole quarantine year. This is we've really just dialed in on uh, making me a better fighter. Was that a difficult decision leaving the gym? I know there was some drama there at the, the gym as well, just with you know Colby Covington, and there was a lot of stuff going on there. Um, what was that? Was that difficult for you? Was it you know how how, how was that break off from that gym? Uh, honestly, I wasn't. I was trying to make it so I could work with DNA and work like work with the girls at ATT because I it is uh, beneficial having so many people closer to your size there. But uh, ATT gave me the ultimatum. They told me I had to decide. I couldn't oh, be wrapping no. both. Interesting. Yeah, so, uh, were you surprised that by was, that? Because I think, you know, you've been, you get along with everyone, right? I, I, were you surprised that they decided that? Uh, yes and no. I feel like HTC has always been like that. They want, they're very strict that you have to represent their gym, you know, and they didn't want uh, my attention being divided. Okay. But uh, obviously I've been with Dean since day one. He's the reason that I am in the UFC. So it was a no brainer for me. I'd follow him anywhere. The weight cut, because you do have a long travel. I mean, I guess you're getting there a week early, so you can kind of work on it there. And I'm sure, does, does, I don't know, does Trifecta come with you to, uh, to, to you know, Abu Dhabi? Like, I'm not sure. I don't even know if you use them. I know most fighters do. But I guess what I'm asking here is the weight cut, does that have to be altered a bit with the fact you're doing so much travel? Uh, honestly, I've been, these last two weeks while Dean's been gone, he's been in Abu Dhabi. All I've had is, like, a garage gym to work out majority of the time. Probably one of the easiest weight cuts I've ever dealt with. My last one I didn't even get in the sauna. So this one I'm not expecting. I'm expecting the same. So uh, as far as a prediction for this fight, I mean, it's pretty much every fight, you know, submission, but you want to do it faster than Cynthia Calvio, if I'm hearing you correctly. Oh, yeah. Uh, everybody knows the rear naked chokes my thing. So that's what I'm going for. And whenever she got it on Pollyanna, she actually did it my way. Like nobody does it with no hooks. And uh, Cynthia Cavale did it with no hooks. So and that's why I have to beat her. I have to. Uh, it's a race right now. Obviously, you know, big fight here. If you get another one here, especially another finish, that's definitely going to propel you up. Um, is the plan after this, you know, if, if you get, you know, go out unscathed, do you want to get one more in this year? Or are you looking more towards next year? Maybe you want some time off. What, what's sort of the game plan going forward? Uh, if they want me to get one more this year, I'm ready for it. Uh, it's really on the UFC schedule more than anything. Uh, my schedule, I'll be ready walking out the cage. I'm trying to get on Kaznat's schedule. He's got the right one set up right now. So hopefully I'll be able to do something like that, get fights back to back and quick. What are you doing on the airplane other than sleeping? Are you going to try and uh, you know watch some movies or download any podcasts or bring a book? What, what do you like doing to kind of pass the time? Uh, actually, Dean sent me a book. Um, the gosh I can't remember the exact name uh it's about a t- it's like the art of tennis or the art of uh it's learning it's learning about tennis and learning about how to teach it and essentially men- the mental uh training that goes behind it it's like the 
and it, it's everything that you can just substitute for with punching, with striking, with every you know, the, all sports are similar. It's just the mental aspect that goes into it and the type of focus that you need to go into it. So uh, I've been reading that, and that's probably going to be uh, what I'm going to be doing on the rest of the flight, aside from sleeping. I'm a good sleeper. Yeah, I'm the same way. I can sleep on planes. It's a gift. I, I'm uh, blessed with it. So I get those noise-canceling <laughs> headphones. You get the uh, airplane pillow, and you get a face mask like to hold, you know, cover your eyes because you can't have light coming in. That's, that's my go-to. So I don't know if you use any of that. Oh, yeah. No, I got the pillow. I got a whole blanket. I got everything. I'm ready to go, but I can nap anywhere. I can fall asleep. Anytime, any day. That's that would be my special ability. Actually, is napping. There you go. Okay, well, we'll, we'll take that. Uh, but you didn't fall asleep in this interview, and I appreciate it, Jillian. It was great uh, catching up with you. I just remind people where they can find you on social media, and if you got any sponsors or shout outs, the floor is yours. Uh, you can go ahead and find me at Savage underscore UFC on Twitter and Instagram, and uh, just go ahead and follow Vitacan, who's my main medical uh, cannabis sponsor. And uh, yeah, watch me get my hand raised on October seventeenth.